So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got another great guest from the wonderful show Stargirl that's going into season three on the 31st of August on the CW channel. It's Yvette Monreal. Did I say it right? Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to speak with you. Oh, you know what? I'm so excited because I love this show. I think it's one of the best DC shows out there and may it have more seasons to come because I think each season just adds to it and I just think the characters are great, the writing's great and the you know, the story is just fantastic. So I'm looking forward to season three. But before we chat about the wonderful show, uh, you know, the last two years have been crazy for the majority of the globe. So how have you kept positive and keep moving forwards during this pandemic that we've been in? Yeah, I think the pandemic, it really created a lot, a lot of economic stress. Um, socially, it's isolated all of us. But um, honestly, going back to Stargirl was really therapeutic for me. I have amazing castmates who I love to hang out with. And then coming back from Stargirl, having my family, my friends, they're not really in the acting business and I do live far away from LA. So I'm not like constantly reminded of like what my next job is. Um, I'm able to just hang out with friends and family, go to the beach and really just take my time um, reading books. I love Don Miguel Ruiz, like those books are my favorite and just, just working out, having, having time to do yoga and all those things, like those are my favorite, my top things to make me feel like at peace and at ease and just meditate. I love doing all of that stuff. That is awesome. I mean, I, personally, I feel that the pandemic has been a giant reset button, you know, on the world. And it's got us doing a lot of thinking about what's important, you know, to us and to everyone around us. Because I think that it's definitely divided the globe with the considerate ones to the ones that may not have been as as considerate they as they should have been. But uh, we're still here and we're still fighting fit and we're getting some great content from the pan pandemic. There's been a lot of uh, great writing and great shows like season three yeah. of Stargirl. So why acting? Why choose that route to take and what inspired you to get into acting? Not gonna lie, in the beginning, I was really scared because I don't have family, I don't have friends who are in the business, so um, but my mom always knew that I loved to put on a show, uh, at Christmas, especially I loved like my whole family would come over. So I love to just like make people laugh and do silly things and just perform. Right. So, um, in high school specifically, my mom asked me if I wanted to do drama class. And I said, I can't perform in front of all my high school peers. Like I want to be the cool kid, you know, I don't want to seem like I'm trying too hard or whatever. And she was like, if you can't perform in front of your high school peers, how are you going to perform in front of the world? And that really made a lot of sense. And I was like, you know what, mom, you're right. So she just went on on her own and signed me up for drama class. And it was the best thing ever. I started to take it a little more serious, like, wow, maybe I can do this. And so in high school, um, we had actually like a stunt coordinator visit our our theater class and he was telling us a little bit about the business and how he had worked with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. It was a lot of back and forth because I'll tell you why. So this story is exactly why. Um, he told us how he worked in the business and he was like, I haven't seen any of your guys' work, but just to let you know, you have a better chance at winning the lottery than you do of becoming a successful actor. And that scared the bejeebers out of me. I was like, oh my gosh. I just took his word as it was. I was like, okay, well then I can't do that. If I have more success winning the lottery, like that's crazy. So I started looking into special effects classes like for college. I was like, let me do something that's a little more safe. And while I was in my special effect effects class, uh, my teacher at the time was like, working at Sony and she was like, if any of you take this class serious and you pass with an A, there's jobs waiting at Sony. And I was like, whoa, that sounds so great. But as time went on and I, as I was working on the special effects project, I was looking at the actors who were in them and I was like, wow, that's what I really want to be doing. So I kind of just took a leap of faith and 
I started saving all my money for acting classes and I knew I wasn't a child actor so I didn't grow up on set I was like people are gonna have to see that I'm serious about this so I joined a conservatory I started doing background work in the beginning um, and the people at the background agency they were like Eva Longoria was here just like all of you guys so maybe maybe one of you guys will be as successful as her and I was like yeah, Eva Longoria. And little do you know, I end up working with her in the Lowriders movie that I did like in the beginning mm -hmm. of my career. And it was just like a full cir circle moment. I was like, oh my gosh, like here she is in my face. We had just talked about her years ago in this background casting agency. And now I have my own agency, at, uh, you know, of my own. And it was just... Like and, I the was rest is history. and the rest is history yeah. um i've got to say as well that that um you know you know performing in front of peers is harder to actually perform in front of strange strange strangers so when when, yeah. when you was at high, high school but it's obviously all worked out for for you extremely well i mean when you started out did you have a plan in place of where you wanted to get to who you wanted to act with you know you know the end goal I didn't have a plan exactly. Like I said, I didn't have friends or family that could help me out. So I really just applied myself. And I knew that knowledge, the more I knew about the acting industry, the better I would be off. So I applied to this um, Stella Adler Conservatory. Uh, I did a couple classes at um, the the business in the beginning. I did a couple classes and they mentioned that they were going to have a conservatory it was so much money for my family and I was like, there's no way. And I had a private conversation with my mom and I was like, I really want to do this, but I don't think Pa, Pa was my stepdad and I call him that. I don't think Pa could afford this. And so we worked together with the Stella Adler Conservatory to like meet in the middle because they saw pot potential in me as well. And they were able to give it to us at a good price. And so I did that for two years. I did five classes at, um, five classes a week, four hours a day. And um, my stepdad was like my biggest cheerleader. So it was because of him that I was able to do it. And through that, I found my manager. So it was kind of just a case by case thing. Like I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I didn't have a plan B. Mm. And my biological father was like, you better give this a year or else go back to school, you know, and, and get yourself a real career. And I was like, <laughs> but you don't understand. This is what I want to do. So luckily I had my stepfather and my mom just cheering me on and, and it worked. So I'm so happy with where I'm at and so glad I have the support of my family. Cause I don't think I'd be where I am if I didn't. Mm, yeah. Family is every, everything. And, and, and the next quest question is who inspired you the most, you know, going into this industry was it certain actors or was it certain you know peers and mentors <sighs> honestly i think it okay can i i'm gonna be real honest here i would watch the disney channel a lot and hannah montana hannah montana i was like look at her on the disney channel i was like i could do that and uh <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, I just saw her as a normal person, you know, and, and she, I felt like, wow, like, she's not, she's not like this perfect person. And she's still up there doing what she loves. Like, I think that I could do that, too. And this was just a thought in my mind, but I still remember it very vividly. And yeah, my, I, that was my first like glimpse of like, maybe I could do it. And also the Selena movie, you know, JLo, mm -hmm. Jennifer Lopez. That was a great movie and that really inspired me as well to just follow my dreams mm, so. i've got I've, I've i've got to say um the uh, j-lo documentary you know when she was doing the half halftime show was awesome yeah. i don't know if you've seen it see, seen it but she is phenomenal for her age and what what she's achieved she's just fun she's fantastic so let's talk she's about... such a great actor mm. i'm sorry i was just gonna say she's a great actor she, performer she hustles so hard she put a yeah. lot of work into everything. 
Yeah, definitely. And it's a good role model as well for, you know, youngsters out there wanting to make it in, in the biz business and worried about exactly. representation, uh, you know, being a female, you know, it just shows that you can do it if you put your mind, mind, mind to it and keep fighting for, forwards, which I think is great. It really is. Uh, so season three of Stargirl, it seems a lifetime oh, yeah. since season two. So we're so excited, the 31st of August. So let's go back in time a bit to when you originally all, all auditioned for this role. Did you ever think that it, it would have such an impact, you know, within the DC world? as it does today. Absolutely. And the only reason why I think that was because of who I saw was attached. Jeff Johns, I mean, he is the guru mm. of DC and the fact that he made Stargirl, it was a passion project for him. I was like, I need to be a part of this. This is amazing. And then James Robinson, he created the shade and right. I think he created the shade or revamped it. Um, I think so, yeah. I believe. Anyway, yeah, so we had him as a writer, and and the whole writing staff is amazing, and I just knew we couldn't go wrong, and it was something that I was like, I need to get this part because the people attached are amazing. Mm. And were you a comic book fan before, or was it a case of, oh, no, I need to read, I need to do do, do some research? <laughs> yes, I definitely needed to do research, Um I didn't know who Wildcat was in the beginning, but my brother, he did collect comics. So Batman, Riddler, like all those, he had he had folders stacked on folders with comic books. So I had seen DC and Marvel and all that stuff, but I wasn't heavily involved or not a, I wasn't like a comic book reader. So I had to go back and look at my Infinity Earths and, and all my comic books and, and purchase them off eBay and, uh, really do my homework. But the good thing about that was that in the show, Wildcat isn't isn't how it is in the comics. You know, mm. she has her, this is before she's a reporter, this is before she's gotten older. So I was really able to make it my own, which I loved. I, I didn't feel a lot of pressure on that point. Do you find, I know this is off, off script a bit from my questions, but do you find that you get a lot of fans asking you, so many in-depth questions about your character at times because they must be quite passionate uh, you know because I don't know everything uh, you know I'm a comic book fan but do you do you, do you find that you get that from the fans I don't get a lot of in-depth questions but some things that I've been stumped on is like the earth the earths like if you were to be on this one and this one like would that make sense and I'm like that's still some stuff I need to do some research on. That's still <laughs> some stuff that I need to explore. So, you know, TBD to, you know, we're mm -hmm. going to get back to that. One. So, but it's, it's a lot of fun there. I, I love to see the passion from everyone and to see how committed they are to the series. It's really, it's really great to see that there's so many passionate fans, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know, I know the fans would love uh, to see a crossover with the flash. Uh, because the flash is obviously ending with the next se season and it's just heartbreaking it re really is um so you get the call to say that you've got the job who was the first person that you told uh the that you had the role i believe okay so i remember i was in europe i was shooting this movie it was called rambo last blood and um I was so many hours ahead. I was sleeping. I got an email from my agents, actually. I wasn't able to get on the phone call because I was asleep and doing night shoots. So so when I woke up, I called my stepdad because he is my biggest cheerleader, like I said. And I called him and I told him and he was so over the moon. He was so excited. I remember him being like, gosh, honey, that's great. <laughs> he was so happy for me. He was so and it just made me just feel like everything was working the way it was supposed to be. And I was so nervous taking on like a DC character, but I knew like this is the path that I wanted to take and it was all meant to happen. So mm. it was it was great. It was a good surprise because right after that movie, I was going into production with that show and it's the best thing an actor can look forward to. Yeah, I mean, the next quest, quest question would be, you know, how nervous was you? Because it's a lot of responsibility taking on you know, a superhero within the DC world, 
but with the fans as well being so passionate i mean you sign on you get the scripts how nervous was was you to step onto set i was extremely nervous i was so nervous <laughs> i remember thinking like oh my gosh like am i supposed to be here is this are they sure they casted the right person you know i had all these thoughts going on but I think the fact that there hadn't been, I think there was like one wildcat before me in the sixties, there wasn't that much pressure to try to emulate or, or copy. I think I would have done that. I would have watched other mm. people and like how they played wildcat. But the fact that I didn't really have those resources, it let me just do it on my own and create it on my own. So there wasn't that kind of pressure, but just being on set with everyone and all these other superheroes, it made me feel like, Am I really supposed to be here? But, you know, Jeff reassured all of us that, like, yes, you guys were the choices and everything. So, well, I'm sure working alongside Sylvester Stallone um, taught you a lot of, you know, you know, of things of being ner nervous because, you know, working with a great man to me has been my idol since I, w I was a kid from the Rocky days. Uh -huh. So, so um, you know, I used to box. I, I, do you know what? I used to get bullied so much when I was a kid. I was like a bully's dream because I had a stutter. So I had seven years of sp uh, speech therapy and I still stu um, suffer from a stutter now uh, when I'm either tired or excited. Um, really? So, yeah. So I went into bo bo boxing because I was getting beaten up so many times. And can I add? Oh, my by, gosh. By girls. By girls. Not boys by girls so so insult to injury i was getting beat up by girls every <laughs> single day so my dad took me to uh boxing and that was because i was so into rocky so sylvester stallone to me has oh. always been a hero and hopefully one day i'll get to speak to him or meet him because you know he got me through a lot when i when i was a kid so i can imagine coming from that oh, movie God. rambo last last blood onto star girl must have prepared you a bit you know in in the way the way of your nerves uh, but in your opinion what makes star girl so well received because i don't hardly hear anything bad about the show i know i mean honestly it has so much heart and i think that i we've all talked about this like time and time again the demographic is just so large like mm. someone can there's a relatable character on that show for every person you know whatever age range there is and so i think that has a lot to do with it um you know there's teenage kids there's parents there's you know like Starman, even even Hunter's grandparents, they're, you know, there's every age range. So I think that it's very relatable in that way. Like you can find a character and be like, yep, that's the person I relate to the most. There's so many and they've mm -hmm. done a great job at like really fleshing all of them, all of them out and not leaving them um, surface levelly. So mm -hmm. I, I that's what I think. And with season three, without your NDA exploding and you getting Mr. Jeff Johns on the phone, what can you tell us <laughs> about season three and what to expect? What have we got in store this season? Well, we have Starman back. That's great, right? <laughs> I mean, you guys all know that. Um, with my character specifically, we... Uh, end with Cindy wanting to join the JSA and that doesn't sit well with me. So that's a little, that's, I think that's the most I can say. I get so nervous with these things. We just went to a con and I literally was so nervous. I barely said anything, but, um, yeah, it doesn't sit well with me. And I think, uh, the judgment from my parents have sub has subconsciously like made me that way towards certain people and uh yolanda is very trusting until you give her a reason not to trust people so i think once people make their beds they have to lay in it she's been <laughs> she's very uh vocal this season very vocal not meek at all you're gonna see her really go at it with some people that and um very well said 
Very well said. It's got to be difficult. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do that. I would like let loads of things slip. I know that Breck said the other week that this season is more like a murder mystery because obviously Jeff yes. wanted things like the first season to be like Back to the Future and, and, and this as a murder mystery, which makes it sound wonderful. And obviously when the trailer came out, everyone got so excited to obviously see Starman back training Star Girl. Um, so I've got to say your character has had the meatiest story arc throughout the seasons. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what's been the most challenging part of playing Yo Yo Yolanda because, you know, she's gone through a lot. She really has. Yeah, I mean, I do excel at drama and crying is one of the, one of, my strengths in my toolbox and they know that you know jeff has even said he's like that's why we give it to you because you're <laughs> so good at it so i would say it's more of the physical aspect like acting with a mask mm. in the beginning especially season one that was really hard for me because there would be some expressions and sometimes it would just look like i'm blank face but it's because like i have big eyes and sometimes my expression is thrown through is shown through my eyebrows mm. or you know, there's a lot of movement in this area right here. So um, having all of that covered up made it extremely physical for me. I had to use other parts of my body to show that I was feeling a certain way. So I would say that and also, also the boxing, um, especially season one, like I had this whole scene with the punching bag where, you know, uh, Courtney Whitmore, she walks in on Yolanda. Uh, and, uh, I didn't want it to look fake. And you know, it's funny. I prepped like two months before that because I, I wanted to do the boxing justice. You know, I didn't want it to look like I was just throwing my arms. Um, so I prepped really hard for that. And I got a lot of compliments from it. They're like, Hey, mm -hmm. was that you? And I was like, that actually was, thank you so much because I prepped really hard for that. <laughs> so I think it's just like, and I'm not as coordinated as wildcat. Wildcat is very agile and, mm -hmm. um, you know, fast, swift. She's very, like, sneaky. And I'm very clumsy as a person. So I had to work on that part as well. And uh, hopefully. No, you know what? Kira, Kira O'Connor, my stunt double, she was able to help me look more swift, I have to say. She's great. Yeah. And, and you couldn't tell that you had a stunt double, so uh, you could have said that you've done it all yourself, and we wouldn't know. <laughs> um, but bless the stunt department, because I think they do a stellar job, because often they're very unknown, but they put themselves through some amazing things and deliver some amazing results. So the team on Star Stargirl are absolutely amazing. I was going to say, did you see that they have Emmy nominations now? Like they are able to get Emmy nominated now? No, because I knew that they can't yeah. get Oscars, um, which is, again, strange, um, which is unbelievable. Okay, maybe, um, maybe it was the Oscars. Was it? But the fact that they have a nomination category, I'm like, finally, they're getting recognition because they mm. work so hard. Even on our mm. days off, even on the weekends, they will be putting themselves through the ringer to make that two minute scene look amazing they put months and months in effort so months and months of effort in so yes i'm so glad they're getting recognition now and with with these meteor parts that, that you know the meteor storylines that you have how do you prepare for them as an actor because you know you've gone through a lot with the picture at high school uh, killing brainwave you know it's a lot um so how do you get into the mindset you know, for the, for for that story storyline. Uh, well, I really am kind of a method actor, so I do a lot of substitution, um, and I have a lot of notes. I have a big, I have a whole journal on Wildcat, and you know, just yeah, substitution and bringing my own trauma and hurt into the storyline. I think that that helps carry the story and carry the truth that you see in Yolanda, you know, like sometimes you see her crying and that's from a real hurt that I went through. And that's why it's so believable, I think. Mm. And after those shots, what's the first thing that you do when you come off camera? Because it's got to be quite draining emotionally for you. I mean, what's the first thing that you do to get yourself out of that 
sort 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 of mindset? Um, I think it because we always take a number of shots. We always take like one to five shots of the same scene. So I try to stay in it as long as I can. I go to the corner and I just um, head down, just talking to myself. And then um, once the shot is over with, over with though, and I'm done and I'm wiping my tears away, um, I just go and I, you know, I say hi to Jeff and I say hi to like our director or I go to my castmates and, you know, it's more draining when I get home, when I'm done and mm. I'm sitting down on my couch and I'm just like, whew, that was a lot of work. <laughs> But um, yeah, I just go to crafty. It's like any normal day. I don't stay in it too long because that could be really draining. Mm. Um, I try to just like, as soon as I'm done, I take my wardrobe off and try to go eat dinner with my castmates or do something fun to lift me back up and watch a good TV show. Mm. And what's been your favorite memory of working on the show to date? Obviously, without any spoilers, because it might be in season three, you know. Well, actually, in season three, I'm kidding. Yeah. Oops. Imagine. <laughs> Edit. Um, <laughs> I would say my fondest memory was when the whole JSA sat at the cafeteria for the first time. It was, it was so special, and Jeff Johns was there, and he just made it such a special moment he was like wow this is like christmas and it made me feel like i was actually a part of something you know and ensemble cast you it feels like sometimes you can get a little lost but just feeling so a part of something and how special it was to him made it extremely special to me and it made me remember that moment and mm. i would say that one for sure i mean what i love about the show is the female leads uh, because uh, being a dad myself to two young girls, you know, it's yeah. great to see that, you know, they'll have someone to look up to um, and to sort of idolize and, 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 and watch. How important is it that we see more female leads, especially superheroes, um, you know, on our screens? I think it's extremely important and we're heading in the right direction you just see more and more as time goes on and more that like the more we voice it the more they listen and i feel like media me the media on television shows us what's accepted so i think the more female leads the you know it affects our it affects our youth it affects our children so when they grow up and are able to say that they were able to look up to someone on TV and feel like a superhero, be like a superhero, that just, I think that's what makes it worth it. And that's what makes people feel like they can be something more than just an ordinary person. So of course it's so, it's special mm -hmm. and it's so, it's so important. Mm. Especially and, and, and going back to your character, um, you know, what sort of training did you have to go through uh, to be, wildcat ready i mean did they put you through a boot camp did you have to learn certain techniques i mean what did that look like it was very interesting so like i said before i put myself i didn't know if we were going to have a boot camp or not so i signed up with a boxer for two months just to make sure because you know my character is a boxer so i wanted to make sure if there were any scenes where I had to fight that it was, you know, at least I had the foundation. Mm. Um, so I put myself through that. And then once I got to Atlanta, uh, Walter Garcia, our stunt coordinator had days with all of us. You know, I think mine was two weeks worth of wire work. Um, yeah, just going, that was crazy for the first time going on a, up on a wire and just dropping down like the butterflies. I got so many and, um, and yeah, just a little stunt coordinating. Most of it was on the day because our stunt doubles do so much of it that when, you know, we would show up on the day, they would show us the, the, the things that we needed to land. Um, but it was pretty easy. I, I would say, I would say it was a, a good two weeks before going in, but you know, diet and exercise, that's a given. I want to be superhero ready. And that was my own choice to get in the gym and do all that good stuff that's awesome and um we talk about you know your costume and the way you look on screen which is awesome i mean have you liberated 
any props or costume pieces have you freed them and maybe at your place um on the wall well i have liberated a few things <laughs> no maybe a couple things um yeah. So like I said before, it was really hard for me to act with the mask. So I was able to get the styrofoam version of the mask um, that I wear, the cowl that I wear, uh, so that I could be at home and you know perform any scenes that I want with the mask. And if it was too little for my liking, then I would adjust accordingly physically. And I also was able to take the Thunderbolt pen. <gasps> what? I know. Do they know? I don't know if anyone knows know? that. I don't think they know, <laughs> but you know what? It's funny because in season two, when Trey and Luke Wilson were doing that scene together, Trey, there was no uh, special effects. They had to do it with tape and a little piece. Uh, like there was, there was the the pen that was that was taped on the arm, and then when he would flick it, it would go backwards. So he kept flicking the pen away. And there was like a, a good 20 pens. So I was like, you know what? They won't hmm. miss one if it's gone. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep that as a nice little souvenir. And it's always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So, uh, and I am sure that they'll be fine with that. I really do. Yeah, but may, maybe oh, one one day you can have, have, have your costume, you know, uh, because you uh, deserve it, you know, you've, probably sweated and worked very hard in that suit i mean what's the best and worst thing about that outfit you know the best and worst thing hmm i would say the best thing about that outfit is the texture on the actual wildcat suit it's so in detail there's little cat scratches on it there's oh, wow. little you know it's just so intricate and detailed i love it um, the worst, I would say not so much anymore, but the time getting into the suit was, hmm. was grueling a little bit in the beginning. It took like an hour, um, cause I have undergarments on and then sometimes if it's cold, I have to put like, you know, layers of, of tights on and then I have to put the suit on and it took a very long time. But as things progressed and, and got easier and the more I wore it, it, we shrunk it down to like 20 minutes. Oh. So... <laughs> That's funny, right? <laughs> Putting on like a onesie takes 20 minutes, but there's so many parts to it. It's all fun though. I love it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. And it looks ama amazing. The whole production, I think, is just fun, fun, fantastic because it, each episode is like a mini mo mo movie. It just shows the amount of effort they've put in with the special effects and everything. It's just awesome. Um, so I'm sure that my fellow fans would like to know, is there any rumours on season four? maybe being green lit maybe starting filming soon or do we not know this is where normally the guests will probably either look away <laughs> or go mm. you know what i wish i knew because if i did i would tell you guys but so far we're still in the dark i mean but no news is good news right there's been a lot mm. of things that have been gone off air from cw and and we're just keeping our fingers crossed because it would be amazing to go back to this this project. I love everyone on it, and mm. and it's just a good show. And like you know, Jeff, he comes from cinema, so everything is a mini movie. And that's like we all pointed that out. Episode one, we're like, whoa, the quality mm. on this show. Yeah, the bu so. the budget alone was massive. You know, for a pilot of a show, I I can't remember how much it was, yeah. but it was like movie level budget which obviously shown yes exactly i remember thinking this is crazy this is that that specifically star girl is the biggest project i think i've been a part of so and it shows like all of the good it all it's all it's all to make it better for you guys you know for the audience and the special effects aren't put in unless they're needed because it is very expensive so you know they do a good job at taking care of us the show yeah. making sure it's it's up to par with all the superhero movies. Mm, and it definitely is. And, you know, if you had a choice of being a superhero apart from Wildcat, which superhero would you want to be on screen? Honestly, the first thing that came to mind when I read that question was Wonder Woman. 
she's amazing. Yes. And Gal Gadot, she makes the, the character that much more likable. And, you know, I always get stuck when I'm on, you know, when I'm on Stargirl on the set, I like watching other superhero shows or su superhero bloopers and stuff like that. And I saw all her bloopers for Wonder Woman. I'm like, she is so just I want to be around her. I want to be her friend. Can we just be friends? You know what I mean? <laughs> She's so great and such a good talent. So no, that's excellent. Who knows? We might might see you um, a part of the Wonder Woman franchise in the future. Who knows? And then um, last last few quest qu qu questions. You're uh, coming over to the UK. Apparently, um, is it next year or this year? Is that how did you know? Because I know everything. No, it's for is it is, is it Star Fury? Um, yes. Conventions. So so I will put a link to that convention in the video below. Uh, but have have yes. have you been over to the U the UK before? Have you done a Star Fury? I have, I have never been to the UK, and I am <gasps> so excited. I was just telling Breck about this. I was like, Breck, I'm going to Star Fury, and she's like, Stop it right now! And she started planning everything with me. She's like, Let's do this this day and this day. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, she is going to be my wing woman because she knows everything about everywhere so i've never been i've never been and i'm so excited to go i love the way everyone talks over there it's just such a beautiful accent well it's not as posh as jonathan cakes um i've got to say because <laughs> he has got the poshest accent um but yeah it depends where you go to uh in england mm -hmm. the accents are so diverse wherever you go you can go like 10 miles up the road and people talk completely different it's hilarious but you you will abs absolutely love it over, over here do some sightseeing uh, but how can fans follow you on social media well i'm on instagram yvette monreal my first and last name and i'm also on twitter i'm not as active there but instagram awesome. and twitter are my go -tos. yes Oh, Yvette, you've been a great guest. It's been fantastic to have you on. It's been an absolute honour, and I look forward to season three. Uh, and, um, yeah, all the best for the future. Keep safe and stay super. Thank you so much, Brian, and thank you for sharing the little part of your growing up and how Rocky inspired you. I thought that was really sweet. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs>